the purpose of this is mainly to show you an, uh, the general concept of tea, but it's not to presume that you need to have one of these if you're going to make a brewer, I mean, if you're going to make tea. The average um, homeowner can get by with a bucket, just as simple as this, and, and this actually has some finished tea in it. The idea is to um, um, get extrapolate and some compost, and we got some earlier from um, my pile, my Chris Thompson uh, biodynamic compost pile. If you don't have a compost uh, uh, system at home, you can use something like this uh, Malibu compost, biodynamic compost uh, product that you can buy in the store. It's a wonderful product. Um, uh, as far as a store-bought product, it's, it's a good option. Um, getting back to the basics of biodynamics, it's all about a sense of place. And, and in, in my right hand, I have three different plants that I just now harvested. Well, actually, the equisetum, the horsetail, was harvested from the creek earlier in the week. But stinging nettle and comfrey, which are growing here in my nursery in the ground, and I'm trying to move towards the um, application of more plant materials that are derived from my, my home and finding those communities and those plants that are going to basically function as a, a, the basic biodynamic compost. So I'm not ordering them from Europe or somewhere else. I'm actually picking them just like I would my, um, my home harvest for, for eating. And so just like we're talking about, putting this material in a watery environment is going to naturally extrapolate the nutrients. Uh, the equisetum has a lot of silica in it, which is really good for uh, anti-fungal uh, diseases. Um, a lot of these plants, I, I believe, add fortification properties to the plants that you're dealing with, that you're working with, and, and, and as well as with the, the microorganisms that are being extrapolated from the compost. In addition to that, I'm adding about a quarter, a third to a quarter cup of powdered uh, kelp, maxi crop kelp. Kelp has biostimulating properties. It has every microorganism that exists. It's just a wonderful, well-rounded product. It creates strong cell walls. It does many beneficial things for your plants. It's a great addition. And microorganisms, no surprise, love it as well as a food source. It's a food source for them. And as a companion to the kelp, I use about a quarter cup to a third of a cup of uh, fish emulsion. And that has uh, the NPK, you know, nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. Notice that all of that is getting mixed up in that very oxygenated environment. I have two, count them, one, two aquarium heaters to set it at 78 degrees. I'm trying to create optimum conditions to create the greatest uh, growing potential. So the thing is, is that your tea is only as good as the compost that you're using, okay? So that's a question that comes up all the time. And, and fresh is always going to be better, in my opinion. If it's fresh, if it's got good moisture in it, you're going to, chances are it's teeming with microbiological bio, life. And so from that, you're going to be able to extrapolate just a, a, a tremendous amount of life forms that are going to be of use to you in your garden setting. Putting this on is for the purpose of suspending the basket in the center of the water with the air around it, so you create optimum aerobic conditions. And in about 24 hours, uh, I think we will have a mature batch of, of tea. It usually happens pretty regular when you provide the proper temperature and the aeration in a bucket like this and we always want to refer to this bucket because this is the every man's compost tea method and it's plenty good enough really want to encourage you to use compost tea don't necessarily don't even really consider buying something like this until you've tried this method five gallon bucket something the equivalent dechlorinated water make sure that you set that water out and good night before let the chlorine dissipate unless you have a dechlorinating filter remember chlorine kills microorganisms good and bad it doesn't distinguish so you want to you know do yourself some favors and not create that problem and then you know you can take a sock and um, we don't have one here today but I've just a simple sock an athletic sock and putting a fistful of compost, in this case bag compost, because you don't even have to have your own compost to, to, to do this. And this is the Malibu Biodynamic Compost. A good handful, maybe two handfuls in a sock with a string. 
and a piece and a, and a stick and suspending that right in the middle of the bucket. Simply placing something in a, in a, in a bucket like that and maybe leaving it for a couple days um, would be useful. It wouldn't generate the numbers that you would if you, did, if you utilize certain conditions. But that would work, and that's what happens in nature, you know? And it happens to greater or lesser degrees depending on where on this planet that is occurring, right? But it, irrespective of any of us. So as a gardener, we have a vested interest in trying to have the best food possible at any given time. So that's why we, so we use um, compost tea systems. And, 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 and in, in, in regard to a system, it can be as simple as a five gallon bucket with your hand moving in a circle, in a circular fashion, creating a vortex, if you will, and doing that for five minutes, then going back in the other direction and extrapolating not only the microorganisms, but the energetic component. And I think my experience, and I, I have actually studied this part of it, but my sense is that all the, the molecules sort to start to line up. You know, they enmesh and they, and they engage in, in a way that is flowing, literally. And so by doing that, I think you transform the overall components to something uh, highly useful for the soil medium. And so just taking that and putting it simply in your, on your plants and in the garden is, is fine. And the key is to provide your garden with an ongoing source of this. So maybe this happens once a month. Maybe it happens once uh, every season, which is a nice kind of anniversary uh, reflective time to invest in your soil again um, on a quarterly basis every three months. Whatever you do, if you use a system like this or a system like that, it's important for you to understand that you need to feed your soil, you need to provide that organic matter, you need to create as many microorganisms and just vitality as you can. And that's the basis for having a sustainable, healthy garden system through which healthy plants will grow.